it's Pola from Pola Quilting. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. There is a tutorial I've uh, published, I think, well, more than the two years ago. Now it was one of my early tutorials uh, called Fun with Fans. I will link it in the description below, uh, which had really lots of views. And it's one of those tutorials where we've got, well, disappearing for patch. Uh, but looks so much different and it's so freeing because there's no measurements or anything like that uh, I do recommend you to have a look at it if you haven't uh, before now I thought because uh, it was such a well taken uh, uh, welcome tutorial that we can do a similar one but play a little bit of uh, with uh, curves and also with the fabric placements so what I'm starting from is uh, four patches uh, each of those squares is six and a half inch uh, when cut. I've pulled them out from my magic numbers. Uh, if you haven't heard about magic numbers, you haven't watched my previous tutorials, um, I will link some stuff in the description below. And also, if you subscribe to my uh, newsletter, you will get a full tutorial about how to use uh, magic numbers in your scrap management. So what I've got, like I've mentioned, four patches. Two blocks I've made are with a plain fabrics. So either you can use solids or maybe some fabrics which got really uh, kind of not that much um, design on them. They look pretty plain. Uh, and just random colors, four random colors per each. Um, no color coordinating here. Uh, I just made sure that I don't have the same color in the same four patch. And then I've made uh, two blocks of those four patches, uh, again from my magic numbers, uh, just mixing some fabrics. As you can see, I've got some flowery, some uh, kind of bold designs, some checkered fabrics. Um, again, you can mix and match anything you've got in your scraps. That's why it's a good scrappy uh, project. So what are we going to be doing is a kind of marrying up two of those blocks together and then cutting them uh, with a little bit of waves. Now what you want to do is place a square perhaps of those scraps you do like the least. Uh, you may have some of those and also when you kind of making your four patches you may like to think about it that actually there's going to be one square there you will see the least in your pattern. So if there's something you do not like much but you want to use it up it's a good opportunity to do it there so put it kind of uh, towards you and then add to it uh, your um, plane for patch again just see so the colors kind of have a little bit of contrast there but to be fair everything will look good with this pattern so don't worry uh, that much so just put them one on top of uh, another it doesn't have to be exact but as, as best you can, we're going to be doing four cuts and we start from the direction when you have that block I said which you like the least, let's say that way. So you want to start somewhere about an inch from that tip, go up and then angle to the right in here, that's one cut. Just make sure you've got nice sharp blade in your uh, rotary cutter. So that's one cut and we do again you want to you want to start about at least a half an inch away it can be a little bit more but leave yourself at least half an inch because remember you gonna you have, there will be seams there so it's kind of that fabric will eaten so i would suggest even more than half an inch at least three quarters don't don't measure anything just kind of eyeball it you know this this is going to be taken by your seams this is going to be taken by your seams there's going to be a little bit of left there so another cut and I want to come out somewhere more or less in the middle of that block on the right. I said more or less, it doesn't have to be exact. As you can see, I'm not exactly in the middle, uh, but that's fine. Now I want to replicate those cuts on the other side now. If you are not comfortable cutting that direction, sometimes we have that, that on one side we are more proficient than others, you can always turn that fabric uh, to the wrong side and do the same cut on this direction. But I will do it this way. So again... My blade doesn't catch here because I've got two different mats linked together here so that's why it kind of stopped there. Uh, but if you have a nice flat surface that should not be a problem and then again here just 
just undid where it's linking again it didn't catch here you go so two blocks done and we want to now uh, mix them up so I will just start from the middle section I will put uh, my color on top and then color on top and then again color on top so basically we have cut two blocks each time because we are mixing two different four patches so now we're ready to sew it and I've got the kind of a, a, a trick when I'm sewing a curve so what you want to make sure is one you always start sewing from the same direction uh, what I mean by that is I will always start sewing from the same side of the block so the curves are eating the fabric how I call it basically because we have not added extra for the seams the seams are coming from the fabric itself they will eat and they will be kind of sticking out a bit like this here so I want to make sure that all of that eaten fabric is on the same side so I will always start from the top of the block or you can start on this side of the block it doesn't matter as far as you're doing it from the same side so basically what you're not ending up is that you have a nice here and eaten fabric here and then you have a nice here and easy fabric there because then it will be difficult to uh, square it up okay let's get to sewing and I will show you a little bit of trick uh, how I'm sewing my calves so I've taken first two pieces to sew together and like I said I want to align the top of that block and I'm not worried about what's gonna happen at the end of this block and my uh, trick is that I'm first aligning the corner of my block and top edge I want to have it nice and even so I'm using my quarter inch foot here as usual it doesn't have to be quarter uh, but you know the, the bigger the seam the more of that fabric the curve will eat so just something to keep in mind so I've aligned my top edge and the corner I'm not worrying about what's happening here yet I'm just going to put my needle and do about two stitches here you go two stitches and then I'm, tr I'm st starting to watch what's happening here don't pull the fabric, fabric will be cut in the bias and don't worry like again what's happening here the only thing you want to pay attention is about an inch from your needle down so you go slowly and align that fabric as you go what helps with some of the curves is to have a, a smaller stitch length so it doesn't take that much fabric uh, uh, in one go and it's easier then to kind of manipulate to do the curves so as you can see I'm just going slowly and then the, the, the fabric at the bottom I'm trying to keep a uh, kind of with the line and then I'm, ju I'm just adjusting the fabric at the top You might need sometimes pick up your foot up just to adjust more because some places will be more curvy than others and that's fine. Now, as you can see here, this is what is left already from the, that uh, fabric which was on the right. This is where my first piece is finishing. So this is about probably more than a half an inch that my curve eaten my fabric. And that's why I was saying just start sewing always uh, from the same side of the block. So all of those eaten fabric bits are going to be on the same side. I will square it up later. So that's my first curve done. Then I will take my second slice. And I will repeat the process until all my block is sewn and all my uh, my two blocks are sewn. So again, I'm just aligning my top edge and the corner. I'm not worried what's happening underneath. And I'm going to take two stitches. My stitches are very small. My stitches are set up at 1.8. So my foot is aligned with this edge, but the blocks itself is aligned here at the top one stitch second stitch because that curve is quite big here i just need to lift my foot up here and then i'll just 
make that fabric align now on the right hand side on this uh, edge. If you feel like that fabric is too much twisted there at the top, don't worry, we'll be cutting it away anyway. We just need to, what we're just trying to achieve here, that those first two stitches, they're just holding your fabric in place when you start curving it. Otherwise, it might be quite um, difficult. So, I'll just go with that. And again, the, the bottom fabric, I'm just aligning to my foot as it goes along. And the top fabric is the one I am manipulating. Uh, to match up what's happening at the bottom. Take your time, don't rush with this one. Uh, it's not straight stitching, so obviously we'll take a little bit of more attention here. Okay, so I don't even have to go to the end because my curve again have eaten quite a lot of fabric here as you can see. And like I said, I will carry on with the sewing until all my pieces are added together, my block is ready and then we'll take it and square it up. You can see I've sewn uh, my block and I just wanted to quickly talk about the seams on it, uh, how to iron it. Uh, so normally what I would, I would do with this type of blocks where it's like lots of scraps and even uh, straight stitching, it doesn't have to be wavy, is I go from the back first and I like to use a, a bit of starch. It's just when you want to uh, square up your blocks it's a little bit easier. Uh, if they are a little bit more sturdy, but it will also depend on the type of fabric you're using. If the fabric is nice and kind of rigid, then you don't need starch. But if you're using scraps and they're all, all over, then you may like to stabilize it a little bit more. And I go from the back here and um, I'll just go in the middle here. The direction of the seams is not that relevant for the putting blocks together. Uh, it's more about what's the kind of uh, most comfortable for the fabric let's say if they are going this way naturally then that's how they will naturally go and look flat later so just go with the flow here they kind of open this way but if in some point you have a little bit different block with curves and the seam would have let's say this seam would have gone towards inside I would happily uh, iron it towards inside so I'm just doing a slight ironing on this side just to put those um, seams uh, flat in specific the direction then I will turn it around and here I will kind of stretch a little bit on those seams just to make sure there are no any packers here now you don't have to worry about if there is something wrong at the very tips of that block here because we will square it up you don't have to worry if there is something very wrong here at the bottom because we will square it up as well you just want to have that middle section uh, be nice and flat and then again that starch will help uh, one to kind of stretch those seams to make it nice and flat and then keep it in place for you and because it is uh, kind of on bias here some sections then you have a little bit of maneuver there to sometimes force the fabric to do what you need so this is how it looks when it's now iron and we are ready to square it up okay so now we are ready to square it up now with squaring up it can be, be a little bit of tricky, not the process of squaring up, but how to choose the size. So, depend how curvy your curves were, either more or less, uh, that's how much fabric that corner would have eaten it. So, what I normally tend to do is, I'm just squaring up this corner first, those two sides, on all of my blocks. If I've got any problem areas here, I'll just go lower to remove them, uh, but you can kind of see how your blocks look like and decide from there. So what I would normally do, I go and square up all of my blocks first, or a batch of the blocks. So when, they, when I've got all of them squared up on one side, I can now 
kind of stack them and see which block is the smallest. And once I find the smallest block, then I will take that block and square up on the other side first, because obviously I cannot make bigger block from smaller, but I can make smaller from bigger. So this is what I've got. I would have gone through C and find the smallest one. I did square up some of my blocks already, and the size I'm going with is nine and a half inch, because I had a couple which were quite smaller than the other ones. And a nine and a half inch is was something I was comfortable with all of them to square up to. So now I know this side is already squared up, and I just use the ruler to square uh, the other side. Some of those strips, when you're cutting them out, they can be big enough to perhaps add to your either adding tape buckets or string buckets. They are quite nice. You can still put them together and make something out of it. Other than that, the kind of first version of the block is ready. So let me pop them on the design board, show you some options and also what other details I've been adding uh, to make another kind of variation of this block. Before I show you my finished project, just a quick reminder where you can find me and how you can support my work. You can subscribe to my website to be notified when new tutorials, products or patterns are released. You can find me on my Facebook page, Pola Photo, or you can join my group page, Pola Quilting with Friends, where we all share a work made inspired by my tutorials and answer any questions you may have. There is Instagram account called Pola Quilting and if you like to share something you made based on my tutorials, please tag me using hashtag Pola Quilting with friends. To support my work, please like, comment and share uh, when you see my posts or tutorials. Let your quilting friends know uh, about this channel and invite them to the group and subscribe to my channel. If you like to contribute extra, you can use a super thanks on YouTube or buying me virtual tea, coffee or lunch available on my page. All links are in the description below. I would like to thank you all for all the support uh, so far and letting me grow in what I do. Just to let you know, there is now another incentive to join my newsletter. So uh, back in November, as you remember, I was one of the presenters on the Scrappy Summit. Uh, which was a great success, a lot of people happy with uh, joining us. So I decided to make my own presentation available to those who join my newsletter. Uh, so once you confirm your subscription, you will receive a document with a link to my presentation. Be sure to save the document for future reference. And if you already join my newsletter, a link to the presentation will be included in the next uh, few newsletters, so you will have access to it as well. And here are the individual blocks. I really like how um, the mix of pattern and the solids kind of bring another line, uh, you know, it brings another lines to follow on your design. And as usual, let's have a look at some of the layouts options. Uh, please let me know in the comments uh, which one you like the most. Uh, also, let me know which version of this uh, fun with fans. Uh, design you like better. Is it that uh, straight one or is it the one which is a little wonky or perhaps maybe you could consider even mixing those two together, make some of them straight cuts, make some of them uh, wavy and they will look awesome uh, as well. And here I also played with some uh, kind of additional detail by adding that um, cathedral window corner here. Uh, so if I have put those uh, four together, I would definitely like to use some sort of sashing just to kind of uh, eliminate that uh, bulk. So not not big sashing, maybe like, you know, one and a quarter, so two and a half inch strip cut into half with a small corner stone here would look very nice. And then obviously, instead of doing that, you could just uh, snowball this as well. Uh, with a color of your choice, either make it the same or make it different color, you know, depending which option you go with, uh, the, the kind of the output will look different as well. So lots of options here with this block. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you give a, a go with this pattern because it's very uh, fun and uh, it is quite easy with those waves if you kind of follow the step by step of some 
uh, tips and tricks I showed you. It's quite easy to make. Uh, I hope you will share them either on Instagram or on the Facebook group page if you've made some. And I hope you come back for my next tutorial. Happy sewing everyone! Thank you for watching. I hope you will share this tutorial. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Happy sewing and see you next time.